Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Check me out, y'all. Listen to me. Listen to me. I want you to understand something about being in the penitentiary. I want you to understand something about being in the penitentiary. At any time, at any time, you are subject to being shook down. What does that mean? What does that mean that you can be shook down at any time? Well, what that means is simply this. At any time, you can be asked by an officer that has what they say is probable cause to take your clothes off, to lift your sack up, and to bend over and spread your cheeks so that they can look inside of your body. At any time, you're subject to that in the name of security. Now, I want you to understand that. Get a visual of that, right? Because most of the time in your life, when you take your clothes off, it's either that you are bathing or getting ready to bathe or in a situation with someone that you care about or love, being taken care of by somebody that you care or love. You are not on a daily basis subject to being asked. Now, let me correct that. Being told to take your clothes off by someone that does not know you. And you don't have a choice. Well, you do and you don't. If you don't do it, you get punished. If you do do it, you suffer the degradation. You suffer the humiliation. And that's daily in the penitentiary. So, again, that may not mean much to you. Because, see, some of y'all out there, you're taking your clothes off for free anyway. But, again, I digress. But let me get to it. My thing is simply this. The other day, we had what they call a shakedown. And this is how they come in. They come in, you can hear them running up the steps. Shake down, shake down, shake down. Then this is what they yell. They yell this, y'all. Shake down, shake down, shake down. T-shirts, boxers, shorts. They yell it out. They yell it out. T-shirts, boxers, shorts. They yell that out over and over. And what they're telling you is simply this. What you have to do is strip down all of the clothes that you have on and you can only leave on your T-shirt, your boxers, and your socks. That's what you get to leave on, y'all. Your T-shirts, boxers, and your socks. And I'm like, dang, here we go again. And one of the reasons we knew they were coming is they turned the water off. They turned the water off so you can't flush nothing, you can't use the restroom, those types of things. So if you haven't done those things, getting ready for the day, guess what? You have to wait until the shakedown is over, and then they're going to cut the water back on so you can resume your normal thing and get cleaned up and whatever the case may be, right? But here they go. Now, everybody automatically takes off their clothes. Now, we're in different cells. We're still inside of our cells. But we have already been told by them to strip down to the bare minimum, which is, again, say it with me, T-shirts, boxers, and your socks. That's what they want you to strip down to. So me and my cell, you're in the room with somebody else. You're not by yourself in most cases in the penitentiary. You're never alone. You understand? Listen to me. You're never alone in the penitentiary. So here we go. We strip down. Both of us sitting there looking silly. Now, I got my I got my socks on. I got my boxing shorts on. I got my T-shirts on. But I kept my shorts on until they actually got to the cell door. Why did I do that? Because it was cold in there, y'all. They got the air conditioner on about 50, freezing up in here. And I'm getting up in the age. I'm just telling you, I'm getting up in the age. My back tightening up on me. All that old kind of stuff, right? So I got to be careful. So here we go. They come to the door. They open the door. They say, y'all know what it is. They were polite about it. But how can you be polite about getting ready to humiliate somebody? You can say the right thing, but it don't take away the feeling. So they covered up the door. They put a blanket over the door, right? So couldn't nobody else see in there. Now, it's four of us in there now. Two police and me and my cellie. So they tell my cellie, strip down. They say, you turn around, face the wall. I did that. I understand. I don't want to see nothing anyway. I'm not into that. You feel me? So I turn around. I'm facing the wall. He gets naked. Then they tell me, you turn around. Strip. So I strip on down, take my socks off first, hand them to him. He throws them on the bed. Then 
uh, he, I hand him my, my boxer shorts, hand them to him. He throws them on the bed. Then I take off my shirt, hand it to him. He throws it on the bed. Then he said, put your shirt back on, put your shorts back on, but leave your socks off. I'm like, oh, my goodness, it's cold enough. Now I can't cover up my feet. Then he says, okay, this is what I need both of you guys to do. Put your hands behind your back and walk down this side and go straight down and go down those steps and then find your spot on the floor to sit. When you get down there, sit on the floor. I need you to sit with your legs crossed, your hands behind your back, and you need to be staring straight forward. Do not look to the left. Do not look to the right. If you do any of those things, guess what? We got a ticket for you. You're going to the hole. I'm sitting here looking. I'm saying to myself, after all of these years, I am still not used to this. It has not gotten any easier for me mentally when it comes to this. So here I come. I walk out the cell. My cell is behind me. And we're walking. I'm walking past. And you got people strategically positioned as we walk. I guess that's to make sure that nobody tries to hide anything along the way. I don't see how because we've been stripped. They done looked up in us. Ain't no way we can have none anyway. You understand what I'm saying? So anyway, we keep walking. We keep walking. We go down the steps. Then we get to where we have to sit. Now, where everybody else was already down there, you know what I'm saying? The cells that they had already gotten to, right? So when I get down there, it's a table, right? Right where I'm going to sit. So you know, my back is a little hurting. You know what I'm saying? So I said, well, I can lean up against this table and that could relieve my back. Oh, no, that didn't work. That didn't work either, y'all. Because he yelled, if you're leaning up against anything, get off of it. I said, oh, man, this is going to be rough. Now we're sitting on the floor. Listen to me now. I'm telling you, this floor is cold. Now, if you want to, look, I don't know how I can get you to understand how cold the floor was, right? But imagine going outside in the snow and sitting on the floor. Check that out. On your buttocks. Now, you you got your shorts on, or if you're a woman, you understand, panties, whatever the case may be. Sit on that. Sit on that. And see what that feels like to you. Now, put your hands behind your back. You got your feet in front of you. Now, cross your legs. That's how you got to sit. And we sit like that. And we sit like that. So, I'm looking. I got, I'm looking down. I can't look to the left or the right because they done already told us we're going to the hole if we look to the left or the right. But it's a natural thing when you hear radios, you hear people talking for you to look around. Guess what he said? Ain't none of this interesting. To, it shouldn't be interesting to y'all. Ain't nothing going on that you need to be looking to the left or the right. Ain't nothing being said on my radio that you need to hear. So I'm like, dang, they serious. <laughs> they are not playing today. I don't know what's going on. I don't even know why they came. And then they had the dog. I said, Lord have mercy. And when they bring the dog, the dog is sniffing for that dope. They're going to be all up on the bed. They're going to do their thing, this and that. And they try to keep it cordial. They try to keep it cordial. I understand they got a job to do. You feel me? But the dehumanization, I don't get that part. How is it that you can't do your job without dehumiliating people? You know, you, you're hu- dehumanizing. Y'all excuse me for my language. I'm getting excited here. How can you understand the process of being able to say, okay, we need to do our job, but we don't need to dehumanize these people unless you don't see us as people? That's the point. And if you don't see us as people, then you're not going to treat us as people. Are you with me? All of you that say you about this life. This is part of that. On a daily basis, you're going to have to experience the possibility of this happening to you. So when I sit on that floor, I'm praying. I put my head down and I'm praying over and over and over. And my back is Killing me. Any of you out there that have back problems, you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. My legs are starting to shake. And I don't know if they're shaking because of the position I'm in because it's cold. I don't know. I don't forget which one's going on. But I am freezing. And then he says, okay, take your moment to stretch. This is after about 30 minutes. Take your moment to stretch. So I'm stretching. I'm doing my thing because I do yoga too, y'all. And I'm trying to, you know, do some kind of those, those positions to get stretched out, get loose. Then he says, okay, that's enough time. Go back to your position. So I put my hands behind my back. I cross my legs. Now I'm looking back down at the floor with my eyes closed and I'm praying and I'm struggling. It is getting colder and colder. And you know what's funny about that? Well, it's not funny, but what I found to be weird, it was it was so cold in there. I was shaking so much. My arms start sweating. I'm like, wait a minute. Why are my armpits sweating in this cold like this? This ain't making no sense. I didn't know what was going on other than my stress going up. 
But I'm praying, trying to bring that back down. Because I don't want to shoot off. I don't want to say anything. And I most definitely don't want to go to the hole. I'm not trying to do all of that. You feel me? I'm not trying to do all that. So we're sitting there again for another 15, 20 minutes, 30 minutes go by. And all of a sudden, they say, stretch out again, y'all. So we stretching all this and we doing our thing. And then I noticed something. Everybody's not, he didn't say go back to the position. He's letting everybody, you know, kind of stay loose. But my back is killing me at this point. I'm talking about I'm in so much pain. I'm about to ready to just get up and say something. And here we go. This officer recognized it. And he looked at me. He said, this is what I need you to do. I need you to get up, back up to that chair and sit in that chair. He saw that I was struggling. In the midst of all of this dehumanization and this degradation, this one person, he saw something. He saw me. And he said, get up and get in that chair. He didn't say it softly or anything like that. It was a matter of fact. But I knew. Oh, he felt me. I don't know if he had back pains or what. He looked like he was up in the years too. I don't know. But he felt me. And he told me to get, he told me to get in that chair. And I did. And when I sat in that chair, my back started to feel better. And about that time, they started to tell everybody, okay, it's time to go back to your cells. So they'll call out your cell number and then you'll walk back. And when you walk back, then you get in there. You got to clean up your cell, put your clothes back on, and then you're done. But when I did that, I kept thinking about that gentleman that said, get up and get in that chair. I felt so relieved that somebody saw me. And that's what that whole experience was about for me. The negative aspects of it, yeah. I'm never going to get used to that. I'm never going to get used to that. Because it's not fair. And I know some of you that might be listening to this and say, what's supposed to be fair about you being in a, yeah, easy for you to say, come up in here. Come up in here and see what it feels like to be seen as somebody that don't deserve the just basic decencies, the dignity of saying that I've I've strip searched you, I've looked at your body, put your clothes back on. And then you tell me if you believe that this is right, because it's not. But what I focused on, what I did my best the rest of that day was to focus on. And let me tell you this. Let me back up. The whole time when I had my head down, I had my eyes closed. Why? I didn't want to see their faces. I could hear their voices, but I didn't want to see their faces. I didn't want to equate or relate their face to the dehumanization that I was suffering. So I didn't want to look at them. I didn't want to do that. But when I got back in that cell, I focused on that gentleman that told me to get up and get in that chair. The lesson that I learned from that, even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of being treated unfairly. Hold on. Hold on. Because somebody's going to see you. You are worthy. Again, I want to say to those individuals out there that thank you about that life, this is not easy, man. This is not easy. But I also want to say to those that are experiencing what I experienced the other day, if you're experiencing that now, hold on. If you got family members that are in the penitentiary, tell them to hold on. They are worthy. Somebody will see them. You feel? Pay attention to that. Focus on the things that are happening to your loved ones in the penitentiary and ask yourself, would you allow that to happen to somebody that you love if you knew it was going on? What would you do to stop it? Because I want you, I want to leave you with one thing because I got to thinking about it. Imagine if they were at the women's prison and they went through the same thing. Would people stand for that? And I would hope that the answer is no. Don't say that you're in prison. Don't say that you're an inmate. Don't use that as the excuse to say that it's justified behavior. It's not. But I'm going to leave you with that, y'all. This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all.